So we're moving on to chapter 12 now where we're going to talk about the Bernoulli and the energy equation. And these are really important in uh, fluid mechanics because they're used a lot in, in many different ways actually. But let me get into first talking about the Bernoulli equation which is basically a simplified form of the energy equation. So Bernoulli equation is a relationship between pressure, velocity, and elevation. And when we use the Bernoulli equation, we're going to be wanting to use it typically in areas where viscosity is not a dominant factor. So in areas outside of the boundary layer. So here you see the boundary layer in gray. And right outside of the boundary layer in the inviscid region along a streamline here, these are streamlines. You don't need to worry about what that means, but um, what you do need to know is where to use and where Bernoulli's equation is applicable. Here's the an image of or the Bernoulli equation, basically. So this is Bernoulli equation. And what it is, is it's saying that the f energy along our streamline, along one of these lines here, or in our flow, is constant. So it's a kind of an expression of the first law of thermodynamics, right? energy is conserved. So in other words, having our three different types of energies we're considering, flow energy, remember, we couple that typically with internal energy to make enthalpy. We have kinetic energy and potential energy, which you're familiar with. These are constant. So in other words, if this, go, this one goes way up, these two have to come down in order to accommodate that. Or if the velocity is really high, okay, then the potential energy or the flow energies would be lower, okay? Because the energy in our stream is constant, and it can be exp one of these can be increased or decreased, but the sum of the three has to be constant, okay? Um, this particular version of the equation is for steady, which means it doesn't change with time, incompressible, which means that density is constant and we don't have friction. And I'll give you some examples of when, where this is applicable uh, in practice, okay? So uh, this is a real useful tool that we could have um, when we do our, our analysis, okay? If we multiply all this equation by density, so we multiply this by density, this and this, we convert now all of these energies into pressures, okay? So we can express the Bernoulli equation in several different ways, but we can also say that not only is energy conserved, but the pressure along the streamline or in the area that we're of interest to us remains constant. So P here being the static pressure, basically the thermodynamic pressure. This is the dynamic pressure, has to do with the movement of the fluid. And this is the hydrostatic pressure. So we just spent a whole chapter on calculating rho g h, right? Where we use this relationship to calculate pressures. So the total pressure of all of these together is called the total pressure. Now this total pressure and these static pressures and things are very useful. One of the tools that we use it for is called a pedo pedostatic tube here is what is shown. And a pedostatic tube, what you do is you stick this probe into a flow, okay? The flow comes along, hits this entrance point, so the stagnation pressure hole is the same as this, and the velocity is zero. So all of that energy associated with the um, velocity, this goes to zero, velocity goes to zero here. So the pressure, all that energy, remember, is conserved and converted to pressure, so that gives us the stagnation pressure here at this point. Some of the flow is diverted around that hole and it passes over these static ports and we're able to obtain the static pressure. So if we know the stagnation pressure or the difference between the stagnation pressure and the static pressure, we can determine and we know that what type of fluid we're using and the density of the fluid, we can determine the velocity of the flow based on the pressure difference between these two values. So that can be very useful in determining the velocity of a flow. And you know, if you have flow of air or water, you know it's invisible. We can't see really what the 
uh, velocity is inside of a airstream or inside of a, a water stream. But if we stick a probe like this, a real simple probe, we could determine what the velocity are, is, and that really helps us uh, to validate some of these theoretical models and also develop and build new uh, engineering uh, engineering things. So again, let me just Bernoulli equation is limited in its application. So uh, the Bernoulli equation, you guys need to be sure that you use it for steady flows, frictionless flows, flows with no shaft work, okay? Uh, incompressible, adiabatic. So it's a it's a uh, it's a special condition where we use Bernoulli's equation. It's a special application of the energy equation. So here's some t times you don't want to use it, okay? So here you don't want to use it if there's a sudden expansion. You want to lose it, use it through a small little tube here like this. You want to use it if there's heat being transferred, right? Because there's more energy being transferred here that's not accounted for in the Bernoulli equation. Same with this. We have energy transfer to the air uh, passing through here. Okay, here we have energy losses. So we have some losses associated with the flow through this pipe that are not accounted for in the Bernoulli equation. And we don't want to use the Bernoulli equation in the boundary layer. Okay, we want to use it in areas where it's streamlines. Okay, uh, where, where there's not influence of other, since we're only taking into account these three types of energy, we want to make sure that we don't add in another one or subtract another one of that uh, takes energy from our flow. So here's some examples of how we would use the energy equation. So here, let's say we have a water tank that's discharging, and it gives us fairly accurate results, especially for the assumptions we're making. So here, an important part of Bernoulli's equation is since f energy is constant throughout this system, we would select we can select a point one and a point two, and if the velocity is faster here, the pressure has to be higher here, right? Or uh, the potential energy has to be higher here than the kinetic energy. So it's a transfer or change in energy from different points in the system. And we can select whatever points. It has to be constant throughout this this system. So at point one, we've said here, and point two, we said over here. At point one, we can say if it's open to atmosphere, we can say it's zero gauge pressure. Since this is moving very slowly down compared to the velocity coming out of this orifice here, we could say that the velocity is approximately zero. We do have quite a bit of potential energy here, five meters, so we don't get rid of that term. P2, we would say this is open to the atmosphere out here also, so that pressure is equivalent to pressure here. We do have a significant velocity coming out of this pipe, and the reference point is here, so this would be the zero location. So using this relationship, we could solve for what the velocity is coming out of uh, this pipe here. So we know it's five meters, five times two times 9.81. Take the square root of that, you would be able to find out what the velocity is coming out of here. Same thing with this uh, kid here, uh, putting his thumb on the water hose. We could use a Bernoulli's equation analysis um, for this, and we would look at to determine how high maybe this this got. So if we looked at the pressure, at, we don't know what the pressure is at point one. Uh, the velocity at point one is much slower uh, than the velocity of the jet, so we, would, we could just ignore it for simplicity. Z1 would be our initial point here, starting off, so we'd say that's zero. P2 would be atmospheric pressure. V2 would be zero since it goes up, stops moving, the velocity stops moving up here and uh, Z2 uh, is the height. So we could put it like this, uh, and we could solve for, for example, if we knew what the pressure was at point one, we could determine how high this stream would go up. So I'll let you guys look at some, other, some of those other examples, but I'm gonna go ahead and move on here uh, and talk about the energy equation, which is a more applicable version of Bernoulli's equation. So we know the energy equation, so I don't need to spend a lot of time with this, but basically remember our energy equation is the heat transfer minus the work equals the change in energy of the system. 
And our change in energy of the system incorporates internal energy, kinetic energies, and potential energies, right? For an open system, for a steady flow open system, this is our equation, right? We have Q minus W, and the minus is not here because this, they've denoted it as net, okay? But if they expanded this to be net, which is work Q in minus Q out, it's just a little confusing, but you guys can w write it like this or write it how we've been doing throughout the semester. Equals the change in energy of the system, which is taking into account the enthalpy, the kinetic, and potential energies. Okay? If we write this same equation per unit mass, okay, we would get this version here. And if we broke up our enthalpy to be internal energy plus flow work, we would start, we could rewrite it as this right here. So you guys see now, this lo looks starting to look like Bernoulli equation, right? If we got rid of this work shaft in and this thing over here, it would be Bernoulli's equation. So now we're taking into account work being done on the system or any type of losses that we have done on the system. And we can go through the derivation here. I won't spend time going through this derivation. You guys can save that for upper level classes or uh, go through it on your own time. But basically, what we can rewrite our first law of thermodynamics as is this equation right here, which is P1 over rho plus V1 squared plus GZ plus work pump. And we could use this equation. The more common way of expressing this, though, is here, written in terms of head. So we just divided everything by gravity also here. So this is the most common way of expressing the energy equation. Okay? So here, uh, what is H pump? H pump is the head delivered to the fluid by a pump. So if we have a pump in our system, we're charging that fluid with a lot of pressure or with, pe or with pressure to help move it along inside of the pipe. Turbine is how much energy we're taking from our system or extracting if we have a turbine in our line. And losses take into account any irreversible head losses. So if mainly what we're dealing with is friction, okay? That's what our main concern is uh, with that one. So uh, here's kind of a cool diagram, I thought, you know, describing what we do. So if we have fluid coming in, we have our energy here, we add it more energy to the flow with the pump and of course we have some losses associated with the pump. We have our uh, energy, our total energy gets bigger here and then we extract some of that with a turbine and then some of that energy just is not able to be recovered and we have some loss and this energy here is, is finally taken out. So it's kind of de demonstrating what the different components of our uh, energy equation are. Now here it's the energy equation on the top, and if we simplify it, let's say we don't have a pump in our line, we're not using a pump, we're not using a turbine, and we're assuming that we have frictionless flow, and eh, eh, what will happen? Well, we would get the Bernoulli equation. So here's the Bernoulli equation, right? It's just a different version of the energy equation, okay? So you will be using these two a lot or some anyways, and you guys will be using it, continuing to use it in your upper, upper level classes as well.